Good afternoon, guys and gals. Tony Green with Greenhaven Realty and the We Love Lewis McClemens pages. And I'm here today with Connie Chesner and Travis Cook. Connie and Travis are with Armored Research, Armored Self Defense, and Armored Team Building. So they've got a lot going on. Uh, Connie, Travis, thanks for being with me today. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. Yeah. We're looking awesome. forward to it. Yeah. So you guys are um, local to the Louisville Clemens area. Um, how long have you been in business? So the, uh, the largest part of the business has been around for about five years. Okay. About five years. So we have three different arms. So they all kind of plug in in different ways, right? Yeah, y'all so got about a lot going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit then about each business. So uh, Armored Research is a marketing research uh, organization that helps businesses to understand their consumers better from a, the, the whys of behavior. So why do people behave the way they do? Why are they making decisions to purchase or not purchase? Those types of things uh, across business to business or business to consumer. It doesn't really matter on industry. Okay. And we just love getting, getting businesses the right information so they can make strategic decisions on that. And then um, Armored Self-Defense, Travis will tell you about, I'm sure. <laughs> so Armored Self-Defense is our consumer in the bar business. We, uh, we do the self-defense for Krav Maga for adults. So it's an Israeli hand-to-hand -hand self-defense program. It's a very applicable self-defense mm -hmm. system. Uh, we also teach Taekwondo for adults and kids, uh, starting at about six years old and up. So right now we've switched all of that, obviously, over to the virtual training. So sure. it's been a, a bit of an interesting experiment from that end. But uh, we, we love the impact of the day-to-day. The -day. You know, we get to really work with the kids and see, you know, what's going on, especially during these times of how can we help the parents to be better at home, you know, with their kids and interactions and, you know, how do we make the kids make it better for the parents so they're not going crazy. And, you know, so it's a, it's a, it's a very impact driven program, just like all of our other parts of the, the organization. And uh, we, we really enjoy that part of it for sure. Okay. Very cool. So Armored Research kind of give me a give me a use case give me some examples of like some of the companies and how you've helped them with the research the companies range from anything from some of your fortune 50 companies so looking at uh everything from how consumers like product design all the way down to solopreneurs so a uh, great example of a gentleman out of Greensboro who had a new type of shirt that he had developed for the cyclist industry. Mm -hmm. So it was a special color, special fabric to allow them to be more visible to cars so they wouldn't get hit as much. Sure. And so we did some really fascinating research on that, on how do you market to, how do you get placement and how do you, how do you market to the folks that are actually on the bikes all the time? How do you get them to buy your shirt to understand the, the point of differentiation? What is it that appeals and doesn't appeal? We did a little bit of product testing there. We put some product in hands and then we got some feedback, did some redesigns. Um, across the market, you name it, everything from uh, lots of healthcare work. So how do we help bring in the right doctors into facilities or how do we help patients to understand or have a better experience when they walk in through lobbies? You know, when you walk in waiting rooms, they can be tend to tend to be a little bit law and yeah. such. How do we redesign waiting rooms so they feel a little better? They're not that environment that all of us have had since we were you know five years old and such yeah you name it, we we probably have done we probably have touched a market in terms of the the research that we've done so there's not a business or a, a vertical that we haven't touched in many cases okay uh, so you don't really have a niche then as far as that goes you just no the the niche whatever. really is in understanding um how consumers think so that's our specialty is how do consumers think? So how does your market think? And then we marry that back in terms of analysis to how your business operates. And you can take that to a marketing firm or you can do your own marketing or advertising. You can design your messaging around that. So when you know what your market is thinking about your product service or offering, it's, be it's easier for you now to make very strategic decisions about store design or placement or what to order or, um, your messaging when you're marketing or what type of uh what type of offer might be best what type of if you're doing coupons let's say for a retail what type of coupon might align um or what is really driving them forward towards your business so that's right. the niche but it applies across all businesses really. all businesses right well so and how long would a project normally take so most of our um most of qualitative research is going to arc about six to eight weeks okay yeah 
So it takes that long to meet with the business owner, understand what's happening mm -hmm. and say, uh, make sure budget and everything is in alignment. And then moving forward that it takes that long to capture from market. Cause these are, um, these are deep things. So these are not like surveys where you just put out, you know, something through a, a Google form or a, a survey right. monkey. These are interviews, shop alongs, um, on-site pieces, those types of things. So it takes a little bit of time and then the analysis on the backside. So usually to plan in for something that's a, a fair amount of six to eight weeks. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Well, well, well I'm sorry. Uh, a lot okay. of people tend to think about market research as being purely quantitative. You know, the quantitative is good to have the numbers and everything else, but like what we specialize with Armored Research in, you know, the why behind the decisions gives you the information to put together some of those quantitative analysis surveys so that you can move forward. So right. it's, it's really the why behind everything as people move forward, like Michael said. Yeah, I mean, and that is so important. I mean, you can have all kinds of data. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, numbers are just numbers. Now, why exactly. do you need <laughs> exactly. that data and, yeah. and how is it most effective? Yeah, so yeah. I mean, get that. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, so it, with our with our current situation, I mean, I'm sure y'all have had challenges with your business. What, what are some of the challenges you've been dealing with as far as COVID-19 goes? I think the, the biggest challenge probably came in the, in the self-defense space because we are a martial arts school. That means that we like to see people in groups, in person, and we like them to get close to one another. All the things that suddenly became very <laughs> taboo, taboo right, exactly. overnight, right? <laughs> so, uh, so for us moving to a virtual environment, we've done that very well so far for our, for our programs. Um, Travis is one of the most interactive instructors that you're ever going to meet via the difficulty of a TV screen and children on the other side of computers and tablets all across <laughs> the market and such. Uh, you know, he's able to give individual attention, uh, mute them when needed, because sometimes kids just love to, to act up because they're in their house, right? You know, the dog comes by, the sibling runs through, uh, all the things that all of us are dealing with. And so that's been a, a, an interesting challenge for us is moving those programs to a online virtual environment so that we can continue to serve the market. That's very important to both of us right. to be able to continue to serve the market even though so many things have changed. Okay, but our question always is to each other is, okay, so given the, the restrictions and the new obstacle we have in front of us, right? What now? What, what's still available and how can we serve and how can we help folks? So that's, I think, the, the best way that we can describe it. I, I don't know. I think so. Yeah. Um, I think the, the interaction of the kids, especially through the virtual realm, has been difficult, not only for their regular schooling, but mm -hmm. with doing something like with what we do with the yeah. high touch and, you know, we want to give the kids high fives and, you know, the things like we always do in class. Right. So trying to simulate that through a virtual world is very difficult, but it, it still has to be done, you know, in mm -hmm. order to create that connection and that rapport with the kids. I mean, we even after the, after the end of the classes, uh, we'll have the parents come over and, you know, pick the kids out of the room. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's going on at home? How are the kids responding to the school? Do we need to set up, a, we just recently set up a schooling chart essentially for home so that at the end of the week, if they've done all their schoolwork with, you know, uh, staying on task and different concepts that we've talked about throughout the week, if they've, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner have shown respect and been courteous to their siblings and their family, then at the end of the week, then they get a star. So, you know, we've, we've changed a little bit of the way that we do certain achievement programs and different rapport building activities with the kids. Right. Uh, like tomorrow, we're going to be doing some sparring. They're going to spar me through the TV. You know, I mean, it's something that is, it's very difficult to facilitate, but if you can figure out, a, you don't have to do it. I mean, crazy. We're not actually, you know, it's not going to be insane, but just to give the kids a different look, you know, give the kids a different like you're not busting through the exactly yeah. anything like exactly. that exactly yes <laughs> or you know whatever yeah. right yeah. so right. it's right it's gonna be a, a very interesting challenge for them but i think as we come into this if we can pose it to these kids as challenges to overcome not yeah. as just pure obstacles to hate i think yeah. it's a different mentality it's that mindset right right yeah and i mean that's so important during this time because i mean there's a lot of people living in fear, I hate to say, but you know, true. With all the unknowns, mm -hmm. some people just want to just hole up inside their house and never go outside, even like in their yard. I mean, it's exactly, just, you know, it's what it is. And so, yeah. you know, to teach kids and adults that, mm -hmm. you know, Hey, uh, life's going to throw you a curveball sometimes mm -hmm. and we have to learn how to overcome it. 
exactly. And you may not always hit it the first time, but well, maybe the second time, Try the again. third time, you know, yeah. like the life is full. This sounds terrible, but you know, we teach this in martial arts that life is full of failures. It's yeah. the successes that you need to focus on, you know, like focus on when you did overcome, how did you get there? You know, those are the types of things that are going to push you past, not just focusing on the, the pure challenge or the obstacle itself. Right. Right. That's important. Good point. So are you doing these classes then one-on-one? -on -one? Are you still doing it as a group setting? We do it. We do it as a combination. So we've got a few, you know, personal lessons set up for them so that we're still getting that direct interaction with just one kid at a time. But then we've also got the group classes going on in the evening. So Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, we're still serving the market for uh, five o'clock, six o'clock and seven o'clock time slots. So that as this progresses back into the regular, I say regular, <laughs> into our there's no other way to put it in my mind okay let's be honest so yeah. you know as we progress back into getting able to be in person again then those the, the time frames are solid the kids have at least some stability in that you know i mean their school has changed their home life has changed everything has changed on them okay mm -hmm. we've got our classes in the same time slots you keep coming to those yeah so, yeah consistency is important too that's very much so especially yeah. with kids right right well so what you know, these, these two businesses that you guys are focused on, they, they don't seem to correlate a lot. So how, how did this kind of come about? <laughs> we get that a lot. Just, just going <laughs> to throw that out there. <laughs> so the answer to that lies in that third business that, um, that we're not talking about a whole lot just because team building and professional development will for a while be on the back burner for most organizations. Um, it will come back. We're scheduling now all the way out into, I think, September, like October. September, so, October time frame. Yeah, so so it will come back. But for right now, that business and the way that it works is it's um, on-site, hands-on, experiential professional development. So it takes all the best of what you know about humans, which is that research side, understanding the psychology, what moves people, what motivates them, how do you form teams, leaders, how do you uh, move people up? And then in the unexpected realm, it takes Krav Maga, and it takes Krav Maga exercises and on site, people actually interact and learn little bits of self defense and little parts of that. They get to strike targets, they get to interact and move. And so that part, that business brings those two together. So that's where, okay. the, that's where the blending is of the two. And a lot of you know, mental capacity, uh, mental improvement, things like that, that's what martial arts is all about, whether mm -hmm. it be self defense or you know, a traditional martial art. Right. It is about increasing your mental stability and emotional control in order to be better. And really, it falls in line very well with professional development, because if you think about it, communication skills, uh, you know, management skills, leadership skills, those are control of your mental state, yeah. right? You're controlling your emotions, you're in control of your logical thought processes. So it, it does very much tie together in the mental realm. Obviously, when the physical realm, I'm not, you know, doing research behind a, a computer when I'm trying to teach classes, unless I'm trying to learn something in addition to help my classes, of course, mm -hmm. you know. But, you know, the psychology behind market research and the psychology behind the development within martial arts ties very closely together. It's, a, you know, uh, especially within the Taekwondo system, we teach life skills. Uh, as I've been learning more and more since we started this company about more the communication aspect, which is Connie's background with that research, I've noticed that there's a lot of communications founding in what we teach in our life skills. Uh, you know, the rapport piece I was talking about before, um, teaching from a point of how do you develop relationships and then using the martial arts to facilitate that. And the martial arts will get better, but we got to help people as people first. You know, that part has got to be like there first. Person. Correct. It's, yeah. it's, mm -hmm. it's mind, body, everything, right? Like it's literally the whole body improvement. Okay. Yeah, that's a good, very good point. Well, so how did the two of you come together and, and form these companies? So I had a, a background in market research. So that's my, my specialty in my area. And as I was interacting with organizations and clients, I quickly noticed that they didn't know how to communicate with each other. But I wasn't there to help them with that. Even though I had a specialty and background in that, I was there to help them with the market research. So there's only so much that I could do there. I was limited in terms of my role and capacity. Mm -hmm. At the same time, he was over there in martial arts schools and he was doing a phenomenal job of just developing people up within a traditional martial arts you know, school environment. And um, we met as I came in as a student and you know, his instruction style and such, I got to see a lot of different instructors and such. And I thought, okay, how can we help these other folks and how can we do it in a way that's engaging? And the more we began to look into what that meant, the more we found that 
when you move, like in a martial arts school, and you do certain activities, especially like a Krav Maga that speaks to the safety needs that we all have, safety, control, confidence, security. When you do that and you tie it to really heavy learning, like how do you trust better? How do you communicate better? Professional development, the, the stickiness, yeah, goal execution, the stickiness of that learning. So normally you go through a professional development thing and you know, two weeks later I say, what did you do? And you're like, I, exactly. I sat through a PowerPoint <laughs> and then I went back to my desk and I had a ham sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there were like three bullet points. <laughs> there, there, were, there were definitely three. It might have been four, but no, there were three. So what this does is it creates a stickiness to the learning so that you remember the professional development because it's tied directly to exercises in the Krav Maga that are so memorable. So that, that was the idea. And we went out and and we literally created a market. We traveled the country the first year and shook more hands than would ever be acceptable right now. Mm, uh, <laughs> and, and through that process, we wound up, uh, our client base includes literally some of the world's largest organizations right now. And when it gets to be acceptable to travel again, <laughs> we will be on site with a lot of those folks that are just, you know, all the big companies have kind of stopped and said, sure. wait, mm -hmm. but we're coming back. We love you. <laughs> Let just give us a little, give us a moment to catch our breath. <laughs> right. And, and it's so awesome to see, I mean, a small business like you guys just having a national reach, you know, yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's really impressive. And, and, you know, I love to see that from our, our local business owners. Thank you. We, uh, you know, it's, it's funny because as Connie and I kind of fleshed this out when we were first started talking about what this would look like when we first came together as cohorts, right, as, as, as business partners what does her industry and my industry look like when you combine it together? And the biggest thing that you can kind of find the similarities is kind of like what I was talking before, you know, that impact on people, right? Helping people to be better. You know, that's really what market research does from a business perspective sometimes, but also from, you know, in healthcare and different things like she was saying before, it's helping to make people make decisions better, et cetera. Martial arts is kind of doing that same thing. We were very limited in our reach of that said impact. You know, I was, stuck for lack of a better term in a martial arts school which means i have a very limited capture of radius you know people are only going to travel so far to come to you in order to train yeah and you've also got the idea that it's really scary to step into a martial arts school connie experienced this when she first came in you know we were teaching a, i think we were teaching taekwondo class or something at the time so everybody's yelling at the same time everybody's in the same uniform oh by the way you're barefoot on this floor yeah. you know it's a it's a weird thing for people that aren't a part of that culture until you right. get introduced you hear why and see why etc so with this she can impact more lives i can impact more lives and we can get to people as opposed to having them try to come to us in order to do it which is much less likely to happen. Yeah. You know, like people are very anxious about doing anything new in general, mm -hmm. but now you're talking something physical where I could look bad or I may not look, I may not do it the right way or whatever. Well, when we go to workplaces, we tell everybody, look, everybody's on the same playing field. Nobody has been through this before, you know? So don't be afraid to fail and mess up. And that's also, by the way, a bigger part of our lessons as we go through this, right? So it, it really, I mean, what, like 2,500 people? 3,000 people we've interacted with Something around that number just in so our far, sessions yeah. alone, not yeah, even just conversations right. with people, right? right. Conversations. Oh my gosh. Goodness. You know, we'd never be able to make that reach if I was doing what I was doing before and she was doing what she did yeah. before, you know, yeah. so being able to have, I mean, we traveled down to Miami and did a tour of Florida and a separate trip before, but did a 40 person group out of South America in, uh, in Miami, Florida. You know, yeah. I'm touching literally people's lives around the yeah. world. And so is she. And, man, like, wow, what does that feel like? Yeah. You know, very cool. so and, and we're looking forward to that part coming back. <laughs> and it's really cool to think that, you know, when people go, well, where are you from? Well, we're from the Louisville Blues area. Well, what's that near? Okay, so if you take Charlotte, that everybody seems to know because it's a, right. as a, you know, airplane main hub, hub, essentially yeah. main hub, you go north of there and, oh, okay, I know where you are now. So it's really cool for, for us to be sharing the story of this area mm -hmm. all over. And a lot of folks are like, you know, I've heard great things about that area in North Carolina. Well, we're in that area. We just want to come visit you. Forget, you know, forget yeah. anything else, you know. So, yeah. Awesome. We're thinking, so, so you guys are being ambassadors for Melissa <laughs> Clemens. And Trying Sanders. to be, yeah, yeah we really absolutely. Are. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, how long have you guys been in the area? I've been in the area. I came here and did my graduate work at Wake Forest. So I think I came in 2000. I may be lying to you. 
but I, I, I can't, I've been here a very long time. Uh, so I came into my, my master's work at Wake Forest, uh, graduated, uh, got hired back on as an adjunct instructor for a while, uh, started one communications firm, went and worked for a marketing firm, then started another market research firm, and now we're here. So uh, yeah. I've been in the area a very long time, and Travis came. I just actually got here probably six and a half years ago. I think so. I think it's been about six and a half years. So okay. Not quite and where are you from originally? I'm from South Georgia originally, like North Florida area, Jacksonville. Okay. Um, and I lived in Charlotte for a few years from 09 to 2012, something like that. And had a really great martial arts school there and worked for somebody else. And mm -hmm. life happens and you move around, change, change, you know. Uh, so I knew that I liked the North Carolina area, but I wasn't as familiar with this area until I came up to see it. And the combination of having enough options from the big city, but also having, you know, a community that feels like you're, you can go to your local coffee mill and say, hey, to people that you don't know, that's important to me. You know, it's, it's very difficult to find in certain metros. It was a little bit like that in Charlotte, because I was in like the Ballantyne, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Pineville area, like that area. So you still got that a little bit, but I mean, shoot, you're talking what a million people in that area. You know, like it's easily, you know, so it, it's a, I like the feel of, of the Louisville Clemens area because you get that community, you know, and that's really important to me. So I love this area. I really do. Yeah, without a doubt. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more local, but before we do that, let's switch gears back and talk about your business. Do you guys have anything like exciting in your business that you think people should know about? Oh, we always have exciting things. I mean, <laughs> every day is a new, a new adventure. Uh, we have a, in, uh, in the research side, we have a market research report that we're distributing for no cost. Um, when the pandemic hit, we realized that all the markets and all of us are changing psychologically based on everything that's happening to all of us collectively. And so we did a, a very broad look at what are the, what are some of the things that are going to change in terms of how markets are going to make decisions. And so we have five themes. Um, and that report's available through our website. So I, I don't know, you might put a, put a link in the we will, yeah, we'll put a link comments on the and stuff. Uh, on the self-defense side, we are seeking some partners to, uh, do you want to just describe? Yeah. So, you know, we're, after the pandemic and everything, you know, things have obviously shifted and spaces have changed and this and that. So, um, you know, we're actually on the lookout for a business partner that would be in the same mindset that we have, a, you know, that growth mindset. Uh, and to be able to do something really cool with our programs as we move forward. So yeah. uh, right now, you know, we're, we're loving the virtual, but we realize that we need to get these kids back in front of us again, yeah. and, yeah. you know? Uh, so, you know, that's, yeah. I'm excited about that. I mean, the, right. I think that's super what, exciting. Yeah. Yeah. What, what does that partner look like? Um, I would say, again, it's, it's the biggest piece to me is the mindset. You know, they see it as a high quality program that is growing through the local community and ways of, of mutually beneficially partnership, mutual beneficial partnership mm -hmm. so that their business grows when our business grows and vice versa. You know, it's, it's not a, it's not a take situation like come in and rent a space and give me all your money and okay, hope you guys do well. That's not a partnership to us. Right. You know, I can do that at the, you know, the local community, uh, uh, convention center or whatever right mm -hmm. like that's that's not what we want we want to develop a relationship mm -hmm. so that as we grow our business partners grow mm -hmm. so that like I said I think that's the biggest key for yeah. and I think that at, at, on the base of all of that it's it's our desire to bring this community and to serve the community mm -hmm. so that's why we have that, that mindset as a as a need in somebody that we want to talk to so uh, of course there's a there's a need in terms of space <laughs> and such like that I mean that's just the basics when you say martial arts it goes okay well we need some space to do some things Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's an idea of having the mindset that um, we are we are growing together and we're feeding this community that mm -hmm. has formed. Everybody who moves into this area moves here because they like that feeling of being able to stop by the coffee mill in Louisville and you know meet some friends or going down in Clemens and you know can go to the Cracker Barrel in Clemens or you know go to the Chick Fil A in Clemens and you're going to see all your friends. <laughs> so that's a really you know go to Pete's, go to all the different local restaurants and everybody else that makes this community great. And this is another way that we can add to that community feel and that what the community has to offer. We we can help develop the youth and the adults in really great ways and they have a fun time doing it. That's a huge advantage for us in terms of thinking about what Travis was talking about. How do we help people be better in their communities where they live? So that's that's kind of the motivation. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and when you when you can um, have people growing in a positive way, it just naturally makes the community better. Yeah, that's, that's exactly it, yep. right? You know, that's yep. the kind of the way I look at it is every time I run a school, if I can make the kids in my school better, mm -hmm then that community is going to be better from the yeah. ground up. They're little ambassadors right. to the community, you know, right? They step out, they help people. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, there's quite a few kids that we interact with in the homeschool market in Louisville and yeah. super kind, super respectful, super courteous. And it's just, it's that type of influence mm -hmm. that I want to make sure my students are sending out. You know, I want those, whether they're adults or their kids, <laughs> sound so cliche now, but they're putting out the good. You know, like it's, it's one of those things you can go into a situation with a terrible mindset and infect everybody around you, or you can go into it with a great mindset and infect everybody around you. You know, it's what you choose to do with that. So I think our students representative of that mindset is why it's, you know, yeah. we want, we want that in our community. Yeah. So that's exactly. awesome. I mean, it sounds like you guys are just developing little leaders out there. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the goal, yeah. right? <laughs> little yeah. leaders in that program, big leaders in our professional <laughs> right. development exactly. research feeds them all. So it's, uh, it does all overlap. I promise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. Well, so back to local, uh, I know you mentioned a couple uh, small businesses here. Um, what are, um, let's see, what was I going to ask here? Like just some of the, what drew you to the Louisville Clemens area? I mean, I know we talked about it a little bit, but what are just some of the things that keep you here and maybe some of your, you know, favorite businesses here in the Louisville Clemens area? You want me to start? Yeah, go ahead. So, I mean, by far, our favorite Louisville business will always be the coffee mill. Yeah. And the reason why is yeah, because it is... a lot of plugs today. Did you hear that, buddy? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Jeff's getting a lot of plugs in there. So, but he knows that we're a huge fan and we're a huge fan for a great reason. It's a, it's a wonderful intersection of community. It's a place where people stop by for five minutes or they stop by for two hours. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people bring a book, some people come in to meet and have coffee or tea or have a book club, or it's that intersection of all those things. It's kind of the, the, um, the best thing that you can do is create a place where people can have community. We've lost that in society right now. We don't have gathering places. It's become a gathering place. So, so we like there. Um, I kind of feel like it's almost like a welcome center, right? Like anybody that comes in mm -hmm. feels welcome. You know, like I said, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. sounds so stupid, yeah. but you know, like whether you've been there for, you know, five years working mm -hmm. out of there like we have, or you're a brand new person in the community and coming in, you feel yeah. like you're immediately a part of that. You know, yeah. you are treated as such. It's not. Yeah. It's a great place. Yeah, it really yeah. is. So. I would agree. Uh, you know, in terms of other places that we love to, to love to see and hang out, I think we're both Pretty big fans of Pete's over mm -hmm. in Clemens. Pete's is a great place. We love uh, we love places that are local and that you know we know are owned by locals. So that means that a lot of the places that we like to frequent are our our food places. We, like, <laughs> we also like to eat a lot. Sorry. Um, <laughs> well, you know we like to go to the Louisville Library. Oh geez, yeah. What was that again? The Louisville Library. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, some of our community place. resources and such. You know what what Louisville in particular has done with their town square and their offerings mm -hmm. around community. It's just, it's unknown in most of America anymore to have people, you know, converge and let's hope we can do it again for July 4th or for the community concerts or the, um, the plays that they put on in the, uh, what do you call it? The, the amphitheater over there mm -hmm. and such. So that whole area for us, even though it's not very commercialized, tends to be places that we spend a lot of time because it feels like everybody's there with the same heart and mindset. Yeah. I, I would agree 100%, 100%. Well, so if people, you know, businesses or individuals that are wanting to take self-defense, if they want to reach you, what's the best way to get in touch with you? So best two ways, and we can put that in either, when you post this, we can put it in comments or you can put it at the top. Um, you can call my cell phone directly. And uh, we use that as a business line. We believe in personal relationships. So um, I don't know if I need to say it right now. That seems a little bit odd. So call 336. <laughs> I feel like we're suddenly on like a, you know, debt reduction commercial right there. Uh, so uh, they can either do that or they can always, they can always email us. And the best way to email is um, just info at, so info at armoredselfdefense.com. Um, right. And that email address, even though it feels like, oh, you're giving a new catch-all address, it literally just comes to the both of us, so we get carboned automatically, <laughs> as right, opposed right. to anything. That's the only thing that happens with that email address, so it's all personal touch. Um, we're still doing the virtual classes, so, you know, we're going yep. to Okay, so is, do you have, is that your primary website, or is, because uh, that was Armored Self-Defense? 
Right. Our yeah. primary website is actually armoredteambuilding.com. Okay. Uh, that's the what we consider our umbrella company that, that kind right. of feeds mm -hmm. everything, right? It is really a triangle that kind of feeds itself. But, sure, yeah. um, you know, it's it's really teambuilding.com. Armoredteambuilding.com is our, our main website. Mm -hmm. um, the Armored Self-Defense pages, we do have. We don't have a link to that to avoid market confusion. You know, okay. we don't want people going to the team building site and saying, oh, wait a minute, they do local stuff. But I don't understand. We don't, you know, we're trying to keep mm -hmm. people from having confusion in the market. Maybe. Right. Um, there's, there's also, there is a link to the research. There's right also, there. and yep, the report. And the report. So yeah. the armored research arm is directly linked there. Uh, and it is also a direct link to the America on Pause research report that we put together. Okay. It's right there in the main menu at the top. So you can get to it. You can see, a, I think it's like five or six pages of it. So you can get, you know, some insights. You can get the executive summary and kind of a, a feel for if you want to have the whole report. If you fill out the little page that's there, the little info form, the email comes directly to us. It's a personalized email and we send you the PDF, full PDF report right back yeah. to you. We're all about personal touch. Mm -hmm. That's all we're yeah. about. We, we yeah, believe in, like you know, we're also inundated with computers and technology and AI and, you know, you search for something for your mom for Christmas and suddenly it appears in all your searches and it's in all Creepy. your ads. Creepy. And, uh, <laughs> And, and, and we appreciate the value of that, but we also think that people are very hungry for personal relationships. So as much as possible, when we can, we want to have, so that's why call my cell phone, text my cell phone. Okay. I mean, okay. Yeah. I get a few people that are a little bit odd, but at the same time in the big picture, I'd rather take that than have people call in and wind up at an answering service or have them feel like they're calling into a corporate line where, you know, they're not getting that personal relationship. We're all about that. Even like the autoresponder from the, from the research report, right? Yeah. Like, well, how would that feel if you filled out the information and it was just an autoresponder that had a generic email and just yep. a PDF report? Mm -hmm. You know, that doesn't feel like we actually care about what's going on in our community, especially with the way that this is being delivered. Yep. It's free. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like we want to help yeah. the community, but so if you get an autoresponder as an email, you're like, okay, is this real? You know, do these people yeah. act? So do they care? It's it's part of that yeah. that full, not just the image, yeah. but the application of actually being yeah. in this for the right reason. Right. It reminds me of the old quote, you know, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. That's yes. Right. Yes, That's yes, right. yes, exactly. We kinda we try to we try to walk that walk as much as possible. Yeah, it sounds like possible. it. And do you guys have social media feeds? I know we you have, have all the social media now. feeds. Okay. Uh, well, with the exception of Twitter, because we're we're anti-Twitter, just in terms of being inundated with information, we've had our fill when it comes to uh, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, I think we sent you some links to our Facebook pages, yeah, so um, folks can feel free to hop over there. They can like those pages. We also have a LinkedIn presence, especially for the, the business side of things. Right. So, we do have a YouTube channel for our armored team building piece as well, yes. for the ones that we're allowed to. Certain companies don't let us release the videos and things like that, but some of the ones have actually been gracious enough to let us. So okay. if you pop over to YouTube and just search armored team building, mm -hmm. you can find a, I mean, there's a score of uh, testimonials from our sessions. You can see how in, impacted yeah. people get from them. There's a score of uh, session videos. So you can yeah. kind of get a feel for how they work and how the integration of the professional development works with the self-defense. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's until you see it, you can imagine yeah. it and think you know it, and then you see it, you go, yep. oh, now I get yep. it. You know, and it's it's a it's a very, like I said, I love the impact. Well, there's that there's that great um, video right on the homepage. If anybody hops over, oh yeah, it's a short team, video. The Armor Team Building homepage. It's just a it's less than a minute, I think. And uh, we had somebody, great local provider, Razzie Productions, came down to Charlotte with us, shot that, and edited it for us, and put it out. And it's just a great video that kind of showcases how all of this melds together into yeah. a seamless experience for folks when we're doing professional development so yeah well awesome connie travis it's been uh great talking with you guys today and uh i'm glad to kind of share what you do and you know with the local louisville clemens community and um thanks for taking time yes we really appreciate your time we really do thank yeah. you for giving us yeah. this opportunity well you're very welcome I'm, one reason that i started doing this was you know we were talking about community earlier and i just wanted mm -hmm. to you know really just build our local community and have a place yeah. where small businesses could you know kind of even promote themselves a little bit so mm -hmm. well community happens one conversation at a time so thanks Absolutely. for having a conversation yes. you know and giving us an opportunity to have a conversation with folks because i think that's very important mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It was a lot of fun. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much Have a great yeah. afternoon. Take care. All right. You too. Well, that's it for today. And uh, we'll see you soon, folks.